Hey Cougs, welcome to another episode of Coug on the Clock, where I am your host, Derek Joseph, and my, my co-host, McGuire Sherman. Today we'll discuss NFL football, the MLB playoff race, WSU plus college football season, and last but not least, the Ben Simmons situation. All right, and on to our first topic. The Seahawks were they the Seahawks suffered an early loss to the Tennessee Titans, a very disappointing loss, I should say. What do the Seahawks need to do against the Vikings to uh, get themselves back on the right track? Um, I really think it's on the offense. Uh, the offense, first half of that game against Tennessee, uh, they were electric. Tyler Lockett making two big plays. Um, but the second half, we just didn't see that. There wasn't a lot of electric plays. There wasn't a lot of energy when it came to that. And I think Tennessee really just took all the momentum. And I'm not sure how we let that happen. I think it's, it's really to blame uh, for just the new offense. And not necessarily the offense and the play calling. Just everybody's still getting used to it in a game setting. Um, and it, it, it's really, it's really pr uh, critical for us to, to get going on that now rather than later. Well, and Pete Carroll's famous saying is always, you don't win the game in the first quarter. And yeah. the Seahawks actually did that this week. They, they won in the first half, but then they didn't show up for the second half. And so that was where I agree with you that the offense needed to, needed to just put the hammer down and let the defense just kind of rest and coast to the end of that. But they had to just constantly go after Derrick Henry over and over again. And if you're gonna do that, you're gonna lose 100% of the time if you yeah. have to rely on, on Derrick Henry or on your defense facing Derrick Henry. Yeah, and, and I would agree, just the offense needs to do better. But uh, along with Derrick Henry, is, uh, a lot of people will blame the defense for this loss, and I, I think that's out of character, and I think that's out of pocket for people to blame the defense uh, because I, I think our corners held up very well for what we have for cornerbacks. Um, we don't have A-list guys. We don't, we don't have uh, superstar cornerbacks. We have a ton of guys that really just all mesh together somehow. And uh, we've gone through, you know, tons of tons of corners in the uh, off season, and I, I think in any situation, at your any team, if you allow uh, Derrick Henry to get 41 touches, uh, he's going for over 150 yards. I mean, he's Derrick Henry, so there's not much uh, you can do about that. Yeah, hopefully the Seahawks can bounce back against a team who where. In their recent history, they have owned these guys. They, have, they play them, it seems like, almost every year, and it seems like they're able to win every time against them. Yeah. And now on to our next topic. All right, now we are going to talk about the MLB playoff race. Uh, so the Mariners uh, are within shouting distance of a wild card. And personally, I'm very excited for that as a Mariners fan of 19 years, you know. Came out the womb, a Mariners fan, uh, born and raised in Washington. So what do you think? we need to do as a team to advance ourselves into the wild card? Well, we need to just keep doing what we've been doing good all year. Uh, we have been the most clutch team in the MLB and we, even one of the cl most clutch teams in history this year. And we need to just keep on riding that wave of being the most clutch team. And that's the best part about this Mariners team is that they're never out of it. They never believe they're out of it and they don't let anybody think that, that they're ever gonna be out of the game, whether they're down 10 runs, five runs, or even just one. Like, we just need to get this team, like, just beat every team that we, that we have up, up against us. And, like, and we've just, we've got a good start by sweeping the A's last week. Yep, uh, four-game series, we swept them. Uh, but I would also agree that our, our clutch, our clutch factor is insane. And it, it's really carried us throughout the second half of the season. But um, I would disagree in the fact that we need to keep riding that train because we need to form some kind of consistency uh, at, at some point. Uh, no playoff team won off clutch factor every single game, every single series, right? So we need to form some kind of consistency. We need to form, um, you know, we need to score at least three runs every game. And that is just not something we see. Um, and it's kind of hit, hit or miss for all the guys on the, on, the, on the lineup. You know, Jared Kelnick, who's a young player, um, some games he sucks, 0 for 4. Some games he'll hit two bombs in one game. So I, we really need to form one, some kind of consistency if we want to propel ourselves into um, the wild card in the playoffs. And speaking of the wild card in the playoffs, who do you think has the best shot of winning the World Series this year? Um, I, I'm going to ride the, the train for the Giants. I think the San Francisco Giants are um, really hot, and they got it going for them. And I personally believe that Tampa Bay will be one of the teams to watch this year. They got an incredible lineup and some great pitching. And now on to our next topic for WSU football. 
and the Cougars suffered a disappointing loss to Utah this week. Uh, what do you think the went wrong in that in that game? Uh, just like the Seahawks, I really think it's the offense. Um, it's it, the defense has actually played outstanding uh, compared to where we were ranked at the beginning of the season. Um, our cornerbacks don't have a lot of depth. Um, we have a lot of young guys on our D line that are actually uh, putting in good work and. Uh, you know, creating turnovers, and that was one of the key things in this game. And we we created a lot of turnovers this game, but our offense could not capitalize on those. And uh, Jaden Delora got hurt last game, and Garantano uh, started this game this week, and he went one for three to the interception ratio, and I, I, that's just not acceptable in in a game where your defense is putting in so much effort for you to get the ball back. I, you just cannot give the ball back three times. It, it's it's insane. And going off of that, the, the defense was, they, they played outstanding today. You couldn't ask for more from them, but it just, the, our offense could never capitalize on any of the opportunities that were, that was presented to them. They got multiple fumbles in, in the red zone and they got, they got fumbles at very key points in the game, it, it, but the offense couldn't capitalize on any of them. And then of course the cherry on top was that pick six at the end of the game thrown by Garantano. Like you can't really blame you can't really blame the players for a lot of this. A lot of this does come down to the coaching, but we really do need to make some changes and just take advantage when we can. But when you have these opportunities, you have to seize them. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, it's 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 sad to see. Um, so the Cougars fall to one and three on the season, uh, only winning winning one game. So that's it. Kind of leaves us out of a bowl game possibility. Um, or at least a good one. But when it comes to bowl games, uh, who do you think is leading the, the, the college football right now? Who, who do you think is going to take it all? Um, I really do think that Alabama has a great shot at it, like, like they always do. Um, you can never count them out of anything. Like, as long as Nick Saban's there, they're going to be a great – they're going to be a great franchise. Yeah, I, I don't think you can ever count Nick Saban out. He, uh, he has the trophy case to show for it. Um, but I also would say that – Georgia is looking very promising. Georgia's run attack is ground and pound run. Um, you you need big guys on the D-line to stop this this run attack. It is so powerful and it's honestly so exciting to see it's electric. And with that run attack, you also gain uh, more more opportunities to pass the ball, more opportunities to uh, you know seize seize the opportunity where you could take advantage of the defense, you know, preparing for a run. And uh, I think it's really good to see, and I think that's going to be Alabama's best best competitor this year. All right, that will bring us to our next topic, Mr. Ben Simmons. The Ben Simmons situation, where um, he he's uh, had a lot of stuff going on this past week, and uh, he's put himself in a very vulnerable situation. What what's your thoughts on this? See, I think Ben Simmons really just needs to do what the Philadelphia Sixers are telling him to do. I get that it can be a toxic situation, but y the reality of it is the, the 76ers are the only team that's going to willingly want to pay that man $40 million. Like, I get the, I get the whole thing. He can't, like, he can't shoot and all that stuff. Like, I've, seen the, I've seen the videos. He's capable of shooting. He's capable of learning how to shoot. And so I think he really just needs to hash this out with, with Philadelphia, either lock, the t lock, the, lock him and the GM in the, r the same room together and just, and just work it out, just work something out because, because that, I see no better landing spot for Ben Simmons than in Philadelphia. See, I, I would agree, Ben Simmons does fit in Philadelphia, but I do think that a different point guard could fit better. I think that they lack, uh, lack a really good three ball in that's also a key part that Ben Simmons lacks as well. Um, ben Simmons is a great defender. So personally, I think what the situation is, they both need to cut their losses. You know, it's a very toxic situation for both, both the people where Ben Simmons really, it, it, he's really not used how he should be, I feel like. Um, they're trying to space the floor with him, but he needs to get into the paint. He needs to be able to score. But Joel Bede is also down there, and it's, it's hard for, for both of them to you know, crash the board and try to get points that way. So I think Ben Simmons would honestly fit on a team like the Warriors, who have a really good, um, have a really good three ball, and he could just <laughs> honestly come there, be a six man or a role player, and just be a facilitator for them, who who's also very solid on defense. I respectfully disagree as a <laughs> Warriors fan because Ben Simmons is the kind of player. 
like as we've seen from him in in Philadelphia, once he gets the slightest bit of criticism, he is he's not going to be able to handle it very well. Um, Steve Kerr is is the kind of coach that is not afraid to tell his to tell his players what uh, to tell his players what they're doing wrong, and 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 like I don't think Ben Simmons would work very well with that. Yeah, um, so I would agree with that, but I think that. A, a culture change would change Ben Simmons' mindset, you know? It's, it's their offense uh, in Philadelphia is not very fluid. So I think if he comes to a more fluid offense, offense that's always scoring, always having fun, I think he'd change, uh, change the way he thought about the game, honestly. Well, <laughs> I respectfully disagree, but... <laughs> Guess well, we're going to have to but agree we to can. disagree. <laughs> we yeah. can. All right. That's what we're here for. <laughs> All right, and uh, with that said... Thank you for joining us on another edition of Coog on the Clock. We hope to see you guys next time.